Some area sanitation workers were sickened by toxic fumes last year when containers of two common household chemicals, bleach and ammonia, were inadvertently mixed together in a bag of trash. That's just one example of how chemicals we use every day and are generally safe when used properly can become dangerous, even deadly. The DEP's Brianna Hickman has more. Certain types of chemicals found in many households have the potential to harm people and the environment if handled or disposed of improperly. But there are some common sense solutions that can help you stay safe. So you definitely read the instructions. And when it comes to household chemicals, it's never a good idea to mix them in any, any concentration in any way. Um, with uh, bleach, uh, if you mix it with an acid, you're going to uh, have a problem um, with uh, um, uh, weak acids uh, like vinegar, bleach and vinegar. Um, it can still release some chlorine vapors uh, and uh, cause some irritation to the lungs and eyes. And with a strong acid, it can cause a violent fuming um, uh, situation. And there have been issues where um, that, that I've read about that uh, uh, people put cleaners that uh, mix bleach and cleaners in their, in their toilets and cause fumes and were in poorly ventilated places and, and made themselves very, very ill. The safest way to store potentially dangerous household chemicals is in their original container in an out-of-the-way place away from heat, children, or pets. Most injuries caused by household chemicals come from ignoring these few simple rules. With uh, chlorine and ammonia, uh, you have um, chloramine vapors that could escape and, and cause, uh, cause illness. They could cause uh, burning and irritation to the lungs and to the eyes. And uh, uh, also with uh, chlorine and ammonia, there's a, a chemical called uh, hydrazine, liquid hydrazine, that if ammonia is in the right uh, concentration, it can be explosive. Another problem can come from long forgotten chemicals, often encountered when cleaning out a garage or a basement. We have uh, a lot of pesticides that we get in there um, that are old and um, as a matter of fact, uh, if, uh, if they come across some of those old chemicals, sometimes it's better just to leave it where it is and not move it. For example, um, mercury is one of the, the uh, things we commonly find um, stored away somewhere. It's not even labeled. It's been poured into a, a mason jar and uh, it's best to just, just leave it be and we'll, we'll take care of it and, and get rid of it because if it's, it's broken then it's, it's more of a problem to try to, to clean up. Bottom line, if you have questions, ask. We can certainly give some advice on, on what they have. Uh, some of the stuff can be thrown in the trash, uh, but there are some things that, that do need to be disposed of properly and our office can help with that. You can also check with your local solid waste authority. Many offer special collection events held throughout the year. In Charleston, I'm Brianna Hickman for Environment Matters. According to the US EPA, one of the best ways of reducing the threat from household hazardous waste is to simply reduce your purchases of products containing potentially hazardous ingredients. And you can learn more about products and alternative methods without hazardous ingredients by visiting their website, epa.gov. We're back in a moment. 